Welcome to another Teacher Tobin tutorial. Today's tutorial is introducing the mandolin. I'd like to go over the tuning system of the mandolin, some basic chords, some of the quirks of the intonation systems, and who the mandolin might be suitable for. So this is an A-style a, a mandolin, about 70 pounds, quite a cheap one. And I would recommend the mandolin to um, anyone that play, first of all plays a violin, because the, the notes of a, a mandolin are exactly the same. It's E, A, D, and G. It's tuned in fifths, just like a violin. So it's a no-brainer. If you're a violinist and you don't have a mandolin, you should absolutely buy a mandolin. And the, all the music is the same. It's so, I mean, it's the same as a violin, except you're going to be using double stops and chords a lot. So it's going to really help develop your, your playing techniques if you're a, a violinist. Um, very different kind of style because it's a lot more st sort of punchy the cars only have to do the sustains from tr sort of trills rather than bowing. Second type of uh, musician, maybe a guitarist who wants to, who's recording and you want to sort of have some extra sounds for, for recording. Excellent choice is a mandolin. Um, if you've got a 12 string, you can probably cap it on the, 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 the seventh or eighth fret and get mandolin sounds, but the mandolin What's useful about it is it's tuned in fifths, and you can do certain runs, like really like arpeggios, and really easy. Like it's um, yeah, a little major well, major scale run. And yeah, they're much easier to do. Yeah, so. Sort of, um, so my, um, minor arpeggios or major arpeggios, much quicker to do on a mandolin. Which means you're going to change your melody writing. So you can, and if you play along to a lot of old songs or a lot of uh, sort of traditional songs, you'll probably think, oh, actually it was probably written in an instrument that was tuned in fifths. Because the, the tuning of the guitar is quite odd. I mean, the fourths and the third interval, it's really just a compromise to get you to play sort of open chords that are squashed together. I mean, that's one of the kind of disadvantages of a mandolin is that they ask you to play a G is ridiculous. I mean, you have to stretch so far just to go up the neck. It's just much harder to play a, a G on all four strings. I mean, you can just abbreviate it to that, which obviously is fine. But if you're playing them over all four strings, it'd be, it'd be that, which is much harder than the guitar. Which brings me to the biggest disadvantage of the mandolin, I think, is that the short scale length means the, pit, the, the strings are really at a high uh, tension level, which means you're going to have hard, uh, unless you've got really tight callisks and you've developed the callus on your fingers, it's going to be really hard to play, even harder than the guitar, I would say. Um, and anyone that disagrees, you know, come on, it's, it's, it's not easy to play the mandolin, it can hurt your hand. Because of you, know, you have to really kind of get a lot of tension down to pull. You have to push down two strings, and it's there are real high tension. Not easy to do vibrato either. Um, so those are some some quirks and then problems with the mandolin. The other issues you might have with the mandolin are the intonation problems. So all parallel frets and a twelve tone implement, um, temperament system, twelve tone temperament system mean all the problems with it are going to be exacerbated and compounded. So, look, make sure your instrument, at, at the harmonic at the twelfth fret, at least kind of sounds about right when you fret it. So as you can see, it's slightly sharp. The problem is, the saddles aren't well compensated. You can see they're just kind of like going up and down. They're not really properly compensated. Now, higher end instruments probably are, but look for one with a compensated saddle. And also, look, make sure the placement of this bridge is right in that F hole. I mean, that's why it's there. Just like a, like just like the same as a violin. That's where those notches are. Good for them. That's why they're positioned there. Is to position the, the bridge right on the middle. Um, the thing is, tuning the seventh fret on the second string should be equal to the open. Uh, open string of the first string. You can see it's not, it's slightly sharp. Um, also this, the, the fifth fret of the first string should be the same as this, the open string of the second string. Um, and then they're, they're not. That's the problem. I mean, it's kind of, especially on this instrument, the, the tuning is just always a bit slight, it's just kind of slightly off. So always tune to a tuner, which is the different advice I gave for the ukulele video, but for the mandolin, tune to a tuner 
um, because those high pitches and also the, the, with the intonation problems. Also, these are unison. You can. You want to kind of have the unison pitch, so there's no wobbles in between them. So exactly the same like that. And make sure that all the um, they're all they're all in unison pairs. You see, they're all tuned like that. So those are some quirks to look out for for a mandolin. I mean, you, you've got to be mindful that because it's got a high tension, a short scale, going to get some intonation problems, and also it's going to be quite hard to play and fret the notes. Now, some the bad stuff away, and the good things are, um, first of all, playing and tuning in, the fifth tuning does have advantages. Robert Fripp from Rob, uh, King Crimson uses uh, a guitar tuned in fifths, um, called the New Standard Tuning, so to force him to play different shapes, and also you can, you know, so the certain melody runs uh, kind of easier on a, 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 an instrument tuned in fifths, and because of all the intervals are the same between all the strings, you know, major scales and arpeggios, like I just said, much easier to do. Now, some basic chords, G. Now, I, I also think, I think of the, um, the mandolin as kind of like a, a bass guitar, but in a mirror, looking at it in a mirror, because E, A, D, G, same strings as a bass guitar. So if I don't know, if I don't know the chord on a, on a mandolin, I think, well, how do I do a D? Well, this, I, if I was playing it on a bass guitar, I'd go to the second string, and then I'd go to the fifth fret, and then I'd probably go up to the the, um, the third degree of the scale, which is on the the, the, the second string on the fourth fret. Because you know, if I'm playing on a mandolin, it's basically the mirror image of that. So that I, I know that that's essentially a D. I know it's going to be a D because it's the same as how I'd play it maybe on a bass. Anyway, that's how I think about it. Or you know, the the, um, the last last four strings of a guitar is kind of like the, that but backwards if you like you know. so it's not too difficult for a guitarist to sort of get your head around it's just uh, um, the fifth tuning in fifth fifth will take some time to to, to uh, kind of get used to now um, basic basic chords you've got the G C and you can also you, know, you can add the G in there as well e, so E minor those just just like you play kind of on a guitar those uh, on the, the fourth and fifth string on the second frets it's kind of like that uh, F now so A minor for example if I was playing music on a guitar the sixth string fifth fret and then um, I'd be playing um, the the fourth string third fret so it's kind of like that and then I'd pl play the um, the second fret on the uh, third string of the guitar, uh, sorry, the fourth string of the guitar. So it's kind of, a, I know that would that would be basically an A minor, and you can kind of shift that up to be B minor, kind of C, D. So you, you have to kind of work out inversions. D, that's a nice chord to know. So G, C, and D. I mean, you can do a lot of tunes just in the, with those three three chords. Okay, so so that would be a G as well. Those same notes, but just um, an octave down. So it's quite nice to do that jump. Anyway, I hope this um, video um, has helped a little bit, um, sort of demystify the mandolin for some of you and maybe given you an impetus to maybe look into it yourself. Um, I would, my suggestion would be to actually go to a dedicated uh, country bluegrass shop and actually try the instrument because really, I mean this was given to me but if I was looking for a mandolin I would be checking purely the intonation to see if something like that is going to be a problem try to get one where the fret work is so good and the saddle is compensated well enough to um, to try and make the um, the tuning as, as least problematic as possible. Alright, take care. Let me know in the comments if this has been any help to you whatsoever.